Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jarek Defiler and welcome to the next game in my series A Patient Gamer Plays Divinity Original Sin 2. This is a classic RPG tactical turn-based game. It's kind of real-time slash turn-based. The turn-based aspect is always in the combat, which you will see soon. And this is probably one of the best games I've played in like the last 5-10 years, depending. It's just truly excellent, it has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam for good reason. And the story is great, the writing is excellent, the voice acting is excellent, the combat superb. There's not really much I have to say that's negative about the game. Uh, sometimes it can get a little buggy, a little janky at times, but generally it's not really that big of a deal. Usually any mistakes that are made are due to the player, and not really the game itself. And you can see it's a pretty good looking game too. Uh, it came out in 2017. I think it came out... I thought it came out sooner than that. But maybe... Maybe, yeah, that's correct. I don't know. Either way, um, as you can see here, there's a couple of gift bags is what they call that I have activated. So it's just some new content. I haven't even really experienced all this because I played a couple runs without accessing the gift bag stuff and then just the last run I was playing with my little brother I didn't even realize I had gift bags and he had to tell me and then I was like what so I went on there and I realized oh wow we actually have all these options so now you know you can get stuff like pet power nine lives you know these are things that um, allows you to like talk to animals and stuff so you can get just some some perks and stuff that were originally you'd have to choose now come by default and so I don't know how that would affect you going forward if you guys don't want to use that stuff it's kind of like DLC stuff I guess you can say you can also do herb gardens things like that you'll see what I mean by all this when I get, when we get into the game um, it's not a very short game it's pretty long I think it took me my first playthrough oh, well, how long was it I've played so many now that I can't really remember off the top of my head because I have probably a couple hundred hours into the game but um, this what makes this game so fascinating is that there are so like every time you play a new playthrough you find different stuff because there's so many branching alternative endings and story arcs and different characters that you will play will grant different dialogue and different storylines depending on um, like what you choose and depending on what character you choose and di what dialogue cho choices you choose and if you want to go like with, uh, who you want to have your party members be and stuff it's really like excellently done if that excellently is even word I don't think it is it's done well I should say and I, I pretty much just gush about this game whenever I get onto it because this is for this is one made for like kind of a the old school RPGers but it has enough modernity in it to attract new players because it's not it doesn't really shut you off like shut new players off um, due to it's like super complex mechanics or anything like that because these mechanics are pretty simple but they are capable of becoming complex for example you have um, a build that might uh, allow you to uh, like say telekinesis for example you can move things around with your mind and the more points you put into it the more you can um, like the heavier stuff you can lift and, or not the heavier stuff but the farther you can lift stuff and you can use that to move chests full of all this gear and everything that weighs like thousands of pounds and crush people with it. but you never think that just <laughs> just by using telekinesis because it just makes you think oh I can just use this to pick up stuff from far away on the map but you can also use it to wipe out entire groups super easily so it's just little things like that that on face value on the surface they seem very simple but underneath you're capable of doing very complex different um things like skills and abilities and things like that so divinity original sin 2 is great in that regard and like i said before the story is excellent and the voice acting and everything is just really good they just the developers you can really tell that they put their heart and soul into this game and they took their time and at least this, this from what I can tell, they took their time and really made sure to get things right because virtually every aspect of the game is just exceptionally well done. Now, what do we do whenever we get into a new game as a PC gamer? We go to the options menu. Yay! So, 
nothing too fancy here, but it pretty much has everything you need. Um, you know, you got your options for resolution. I do 2K, 144 hertz. And they do allow for fake school screen, like window, which is like fake full screen. Pretty much like borderless window, I assume. Now you got your options for your graphics cards, V-Sync, nothing too fancy. Frame cap and a frame um, cap slider, which is really good. You don't really see that too often in many games. Gamma correction, nothing too fancy. Uh, they have an overall quality preset, which is awesome. I do on Ultra. Um, you know, model, texture quality, texture filterings. This is really good because you know a lot some games you can't really tell the difference but you can really tell the difference in a lot of these quality filters and options you know you got your shadows options quality shadow quality options and your anti-aliasing oh, very, very nice they don't really have too many options for that and i'm not sure it's probably because they don't really need it being that this game isn't first person it's top down third person and you don't that you can zoom in a little bit but not really too much so you're not really getting like super super into like the detail of objects up close and you got ambient inclusion depth of feel motion blur and everything i usually have these off um i just don't like the way i don't like motion blur and depth of feel in general um but everything else bloom <coughs> excuse me bloom i don't really like either but it looks good in this game so i usually keep it around um, I don't know why that wasn't selected like that in the first place. Audio. They even have a sound quality feature, which is kind of nice. Don't really see that in most games either. Mute sound when game windows not focused. That's pretty good. And look at all these these options for volume. This is great. Like you can even change the voice dialogue for, I'm assuming, your character. You have the master voice dialogue, voice narrator, voice overhead. Just really good stuff. There is a lot of voice acting in the game. And like I said before, it's really, really good. Probably some of the best voice acting I have heard in a game, like, ever. And that's saying a lot. And, you know, you can even change the volume of the cinematics. <clears throat> this will be the first time I am recording this, uh, so I'm not sure if this will be too loud for you guys or not. We'll see. Hopefully not. I did adjust the music and stuff because it was too loud when I tested it. And gameplay, just, like, simple stuff, autosaves, you know, land connection options peace combat highlights tactical highlights um i'm not sure what this is i think this is just um actually it says it right there select the type of clue characters and monsters have in tactical top-down mode that shows their alignments for you circle is a colored circle at their base outline is a colored outline border okay so that's just like the different kind of like to see who your enemy ally or neutral is i, see, I get that arena highlights the same thing camera edge i never really play around with this too much because it's just fine the way it is um close-up dialogue that might be an option that, like people that are really into immersion likes moves in closer to the character i don't particularly care too much for that um hot bar behavior this can be kind of annoying but at the same time there's a lot of items in the game so you'll have a lot of grenades a lot of potions and stuff like that so this helps you just keep up with it like if you forget you might have it in your inventory then this will just automatically add it to your hot bar uh, so i keep it around because you can always just take them off but um you know it's just this is like developers game developers that it you know are, or i should say a game that is made by game developers that are gamers this is not a corporate entity shoveling out some you know crapware this is a game that was you know specifically designed with a goal in mind they had a vision and you can just tell and i'm, I'm just saying this just from what i experienced in the game and what it entails because this is not a game that is made by a committee <laughs> this is a game that seems very much to be made by gamers and just you know just the options menu alone can tell you that and controls it does have controller support i believe i played it on my playstation 2 sometimes when my little brother comes over but um i haven't used a controller on pc because you know it's just like why would you kind of thing it's it's, it's way better it's far superior with mouse and keyboard um, because there's just 
I mean, look at the options here. You have a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff to click in the game. So mouse and keyboard is definitely superior in this regard. So that's the option menu, looking pretty good. Um, the Game Master, I have it. I'm gonna probably delve into this a little later and play with it. I don't know what it is. I guess I mean I'm assuming you're you know you're the Game Master and just create your own campaign. You can probably adjust uh, different abilities and stuff. I'm not gonna go into that now because I just don't have any experience in it. I mainly just play the um, original game arena. I'm not sure what this is either. I'm assuming it's just you playing against other players. I've never tried this out either because it's just... I, I don't really play these kind of games for PvP aspects. I play these kind of games for the story, for the immersion, for the lore. Um, RPG is my favorite gaming genre. So this is definitely a story-driven game. And it excels at that. Uh, as far as mods go, I don't have any at, uh, uploaded or are activated so this is something I would probably look into later but right now I just I'm just gonna show you guys the base game um, because it's it's good it doesn't really need mods but I'm sure mods make it better because mods generally always make games better because mods are awesome and people that mod are awesome so let's get started shall we I'm gonna start a new game I have multiple campaigns but right now we're gonna do different modes here uh, explorer mode is the simple mode i think it's like actually i think story mode is like the easiest mode it's pretty much like yeah you're here for fun in the fantasy but not for a rigorous challenge um so this is kind of like if you just play in the game just for like ultra casual just want to you know get the story and the dialogue and create like a really powerful fun build or something or maybe an experimental build that you don't have to deal with dying over and over explorer mode i think is the next step up it says here you prefer a fair but forgiving adventure that rewards clever thinking in and out of battle. So, I don't know if this, I think this might be the normal version or classical. Might, classic might be the normal version. A classic role playing experience. You are cunning, resourceful, and prepared for the perils that await. This is what mode I usually play in, but it does require some, a lot of uh, audio saves coming and stuff like that, which isn't looked down on in this game. I mean, I don't look down on saves coming when it comes to single player games at all. I think, you know, it's up to the player. They, you know, I, I save scum all the time because I just like to, you know, not have to restart over and over and over again. I, I don't ever play hardcore chord modes or anything like that. I just don't have the time. So I save scum a lot. And you'll probably see me save scumming a lot in this playthrough. Um, I think I might do explore mode that just to make it easier so you guys don't have to see me save scumming so much. But usually I play classic mode. Um, I think explore mode might be the normal mode and then classic mode might be the next step up But classic mode can be you know challenging a die a lot, but um, It's not too hardcore now tactician mode on the other hand you have regular and honor um, Honor is basically your hardcore mode um, once you die your entire party you can get up four play four um, Characters in a party. I'm just gonna do one do lone wolf run and then maybe another time or in the next run I play playthrough if I do another one and record it and put it up on YouTube I'll probably do like a four team uh, four person team but for starters I'm just going to do a lone wolf run and uh, right here it says if your entire party perishes the save game is erased and your quest is well and truly over so this is basically hardcore mode and with regular tactician mode it's just the same thing but um, without hardcore mode, so you can save scum and whatnot. But it's hard. And um, if there is a criticism I would say about tactician mode is that it's it's kind of artificially hard. It's just a numbers game. They tend to do stat boost on the enemies and like lower your damage and stuff, I believe, if I recall. I played it uh, a couple times. Never got to the end because I just, I found it more frustrating than fun. But this is definitely for the people that really like that hardcore challenge and you know those guys are out there we got our hardcore players out there so i'm going to do explorer mode because it's a little a little bit easier we can just focus more on the game mechanics and stuff than rather actually having to get stressed out over a fight but we don't want to go too easy so we're not going to go story mode so let's begin here and these are the characters that are the story like drivers of the game um, each one has their own branching storyline and it's exceptionally well done because you can play any of them or you can play none of them if you want 
and you can mix and match them because you only get you can get a max of like I said before four characters per team and depending on the ones you choose the Red Prince he's probably my favorite actually the Red Prince is awesome Sybil Ifen Beast Losi I think is her name I forget how to pronounce it Fane who's probably my second favorite and then the regular guys so with these guys depending on the setup you have in your your party they will have different like your game will be different each time you mix it up so they will have different interactions with each other they will have different interactions with all the npcs in the world they will have different outcomes as far as you know who might live in the end because there is a lot of the characters will die you know and um, you know if you become friends with them you could probably you know, keep them alive but if you don't and then like you might have to end up fighting them and killing them it's really it's really awesome it's crazy it's like because there's so many options of what you can do in so many different ways now since I'm gonna do a lone wolf build lone wolf is I'll show you here uh, let's go down here lone wolf is a talent that you can select and it provides two max AP which is your action points two recovery AP so that's each turn you get like your, your uh, AP back I believe plus 30% vitality plus 60% physical armor 60% magic armor doubles invested points and attributes up to a maximum of 40 and combat abilities except polymorph ability up to a maximum of 10 while you are adventuring solo or with at most one companion so you can do like a two person party and still gain the benefits of lone wolf this bonus is temporarily removed by there are more than two members in the current party so this basically makes it so you can just play the game as one or two characters if you want which is awesome because I, I like to play the you know for like party of four but um, I just done it so many times that I'm kind of I've been transitioning more into the lone wolf aspect just because it's fun like the most fun build I've ever done was uh, I played Sybil, her, and I did a rogue necromancer build. And she is just a powerhouse with that. And it was so much fun. And I got it with this special set armor that you get later on in Act 2, no, Act 3. And, or was it Act 2? You know, it might be Act 2. Yeah, I, I believe it's Act 2. And um, it's just like, Maybe we'll get it, get to that point and we see it in the story. But it's, uh, she was like a lot of fun. But I don't know what I'm going to do this round. We'll see. But as you can see, even though it shows, like, you know, the, the story characters have their own talents and stuff. But you can't change each one, depending on the character. Like, they, they have ones that are permanent. Like, he will like if and will always have ingenious and thrifty but then you can choose your other ones you know like uh sybil will always have corpse eater and ancestral knowledge corpse eater is an elf trait where they can um you know like eat pieces of bodies and then gain knowledge from that it's really interesting and like the red prince he has spell song and sophisticated so that gives him plus one persuasion and he has fire resistance and poison resistance so there are race elements racial traits which is really cool but here's the thing depending on each character you can outside of those permanent talents you can change their build so you can make them whatever you want so he could like the default just starts off as a rogue but if what if you don't want to be a rogue what if you want to be a ranger you can make him a ranger if you want to be metamorph which is like a polymorph thing kind of like shape shifting and stuff it's really fun you can do that you can be a knight which i think is his standard he's like a warrior kind of guy warrior prince inquisitor which is like a warrior slash necromancer uh fighter which is more a defensive build so you, you do geomancer which is like buffs with armor and doing like poison and earth damage and stuff like that mixed with a um like warrior build or warfare is what it's called here an enchanter is just like a somebody that you usually think is more like the healer but they also can use um you know like arrow uh, arrow thurge or arrow thurgy i don't know how you say that whatever arrow thurgy will stick with that and hydrosophists um say, you know like do water builds and stuff like, but here's the thing. This is just the start. You can be, say, a wizard. 
you have pyronec uh, pyrokinetic and geomancer but as you build you can build towards a rogue or you can build towards a warrior you can make it like a wizard warrior you can make it a wizard rogue you can make it a wizard necromancer you can do anything you don't have to just stick with the wizard build you can create it like into anything you want and it's fantastic and you'll see this with the other presets right here attributes this is just you know standard staff strength finesse intelligence constitution memory wits strength is obviously going to be affecting mostly your warfare ability um you also affects your carry limit finesse is going to be your like dexterity builds like rogue and uh, ranger so your rank like the guy with the crossbow and stuff intelligence is going to be all your spell casters things like that constitution is just standard vitality nothing too fancy there memory affects your your memory slot so how many skills you can put on your your um, hot bar and that you can use at any given time wits affects your critical strength uh, critical chance as well as your initiative so this is a very important one for like the ranger or the rogue because um, you want to go first initiative is you know it's your your uh, turn basically the in combat it's all turn-based, tactical turn-based. So initiative is your placement in that turn. So the higher the initiative, then you will, you know, the, the chances you are that you'll be going first in each turn. So you can sometimes surpass people with lower initiative and you can even go like two times um, in one turn before they go in one if they have really low initiative. So it's just, you know, depending on how you want to build it. But if you go to the abilities section these are all the combat abilities and these are all the civil abilities civil abilities you don't get too much in so this is something that you would just um they're more like passives uh, like lore master allows you to identify things like the like weapons and armor and stuff that that you have to either if you can't identify them yourself you have to take to a a merchant and then have them identify it to you for you telekinesis allows you to just move items from distances pretty cool and like i said before you can do really dangerous stuff with this if you like there's some some exploits i mean i don't, I don't know if you call it an exploit i i assume that it's intended in the game but you can take a chest like an indestructible chest and fill it up with as much stuff as possible and then just throw it around my little brother showed me this i think he got it from the um who was it I was another YouTuber. I forget who it was, but um, did the something Brit? I forget. But he he always does exploits in games and stuff. He's a funny YouTuber. I just forget his name. Pardon me, but he discovered this or they showed it to to on his uh, YouTube channel. My little brother found it and showed it to me, and it's it's hella fun. You can just like fill up this indestructible chest and then just move the chest around with telekinesis and just like one shot people a little silly but effective you know sneaking i don't really use sneaking i don't think i've ever used sneaking but um you can if you want thievery is probably one of the more important skills you get lock picking through that bartering i never really cared for i never really had a problem with money i, I was able to always get money easily persuasion is very important in my opinion this is one i usually go for most of the time if you are looking to do a very story driven immersive lore based run so this will allow you to unlock a lot of dialogue with characters persuade characters to do stuff so you can have like you can have a, a, a playthrough where you have no persuasion on any of your characters and you'll have to do every fight and everything you could do that slam playthrough but if you have somebody with high persuasion you can probably skip out on most of those fights because you can just talk them out of it or you can talk them to join your side or you can like just barter with them or something because you just have really good persuasive skills and you might think oh that sounds kind of boring because i'd rather fight well you know it depends on your taste i for one like to go diplomatic routes because i think it's just more like not more but i think it's interesting and fun so i tend to do a lot of persuasion bills lucky charm is very effective as well it just allows you to find treasure and stuff like randomly when you're, loot, when you're looting bodies and things like that so with the combat abilities these are the active traits i guess you could say these are the ones that will directly affect your combat so warfare again that's just like the warrior builds um physical attack deal five percent more with each point but you have to recall that each one of these combat abilities has their own skill pool 
So, you know, Necromancer will have like several, you know, I don't know how much total, maybe like a few dozen abilities. So you, but in order to use those in the higher ones, you have to invest more points into Necromancer. Uh, same with summoning polymorph, like all of them. They all have a lot of abilities per each. And you have to invest in each one in order to obtain those. So you can't max out everything. You can't put like, uh, well, you can probably, uh, going lone wolf, you get more points. So you can probably max out a few of them. But you still can't max out everything. So that's why it's good because you get like a feel of permeance on your character if you like that which I do, um, you know, coming from Diablo 2, I very much like having a character that I kind of become attached to because it's unique in and of itself. So if I want to do like a Warfare Huntsman build, then that would be like a ranged warrior guy. So like I can get up close and do some damage, but if I want and somebody like say runs away from me or if I'm like on the higher ground, then I can just switch to my crossbow and then just do that so I can put points into that. And, you know, Scoundrel is like a rogue guy, He's big, you know, based on critical hit chance, movement speed like that. Very fun. That's probably one of my favorite builds, like Scoundrel, Necromancer was probably my favorite build. Um, Hydro, uh, Hydrosophus, py Pyrokinetic, you know, it's fire, water. Uh, it's like more air and lightning and stuff like that for Aerothurgy. Aerothurgy? Aero the Urge. However you say it. Uh, Geomancer, you know, like I said, is like more defensive stuff. You get a lot of armor and uh, you do like earth damage and oil and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. Polymorph is, is cool. Uh, it's very weird, but effective and fun. Summoning is really powerful. Um, really good for it, like anything really. Like summoning is just a really strong build. You get these totems that just wreck stuff. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll do a summoning build this turn because... I haven't really done one solo. I've done it just on like my off characters, but my main characters, I've never really done a summoning one. So I might do summoning Necromancer or something like that. Or Ranger. Like Huntsman. I've never really done a Huntsman. Um, anyway. And then you have the weapon and defensive traits, which you can put points into. Now these are all considered one combat ability pool. So if you have one point, then you have to choose which one you want to put it in. So you can't put like one point into polymorph and then one point into range. You know, you have to choose between the two. Um, Single-handed weapon, two-handed weapon, pretty self-explanatory. Range, these are just, you know, like if you do single-handed, then, you know, it's just like if you have like a sword and then if you have a shield or something or an offhand, like it says right there, empty offhand, then that'll like increase your damage and accuracy and stuff. Two-handed, you have to have two-handed weapon. Range, you know, obviously, crossbows, bows. Dual wielding is two one-handed weapons. So, like, um, if you have, like, daggers, which is the most common with the scoundrel, or swords, something like that. Pretty cool. I, I did, like, a dual wielding axe, one-handed axe build, which was pretty funky. Wasn't the best. I got to the, I beat the game with it, but it was, it was kind of more difficult than it had to be. But it was doable. That's the thing about this game. It's like some builds are just objectively better than others, yes. But generally, almost any build can still work. Like you can still generally beat the game with almost any build unless it's just absolutely terrible. Like you have no points maxed out in anything. Everything's spread out or something. That probably won't work. But these three, the defensive abilities are actually really fun. Like Retribution, if you max this out and... and um, do some other builds with like warfare i think and geomancer this can be devastating because you like you build it so you're just tank and you just have people attack you but then they do so much damage to themselves that they'll just kill themselves it's really a lot of fun leadership is good if you're doing a party um i you know won't be doing that so probably won't be investing any points in that perseverance is good really good actually uh, restores magic armor after you recover from frozen or stone and recoveries or restores physical armor after knockdown or petrified which there is a lot of cc in this game so a lot of crowd control you're getting stunned frozen constantly knocked down petrified not so much but um there's a lot of stuns and stuff in the game so perseverance is really good if you're doing a tank build um, i tend to do more like evasive builds so i don't really have to put too much into that but as you can see just just looking at these two ability um, menus like the amount of customization you can do in this game as far as um, the, the combat mechanics and and uh, character builds is outstanding like they just really outdid themselves there and keep in mind that every single one of these has like dozens of 
skills attached to each one. Maybe not dozens, but I can't, you know, I, I can't name them off the top of my head. There's just so many, but there's there are several for each one. And then uh, talents, there's a lot over here. We got Far Out Man, increases the range of skills and scrolls by two meters. Does not affect melee and touch range skills. So look at this. Look at this. Like these are, are um, uh, ability dependent. So in order, like for example, in, you, in order to get the pawn, you have to have one scoundrel. Uh, the pawn permits your character one AP worth of free movement per turn. It's pretty good. You have to have one in warfare to get picture of health. Picture of health gives you extra vitality, 3% for every point in warfare. Ice King, a character with Ice King has an extra 15% water resistance, but takes 15% penalty to fire resistance. Additionally, the maximum water resistance is raised by 10. I don't really pay too much attention to resistances because I just don't really have problems with them as much unless you're probably playing tactical. Classic mode, sometimes you need them, but generally you can get around it by other means like potions and stuff like that so i never really had a problem with resistances until i was playing tactical executioner executioner gives you two extra action points after dealing a killing blow once per turn elemental ranger shooting arrows will inflict bonus elemental damage depending on the surface your target is standing in so that's pretty cool so like uh, if they're standing in water then you'll do additional water damage if they're standing in fire which happens a lot like this game loves its fire then you know you'll do additional fire damage. Duck Duck Goose lets you evade attacks of opportunity. Uh, pretty pretty important. Uh, you have to have one enhancement for that. Opportunity is when you walk by a the, the character has to have it for for uh, for starters. But if you walk next to somebody that has a melee weapon, then they will be able to attack you with it when you walk by them. So it's pretty powerful if you have it yourself actually, because your attacks can be pretty devastating once you get them going. Bigger and better immediately grants you two extra attribute points to spend. That just um, yeah allows you to put uh, points into this. So like, you know, you can put two more points into strength, finesse, or something like that. And all skilled up it immediately gives you one extra combat point ability points and one extra civil ability point. So then you get one extra point to this, which is pretty good because these don't you don't get that often. So the more of those you can get, the better. Now, there's a lot of these. Ambidextrous reduces the cost of using grenades and scrolls by 1 AP when your offhand is free. And I never use that because I don't really use grenades and a lot. Um, I use scrolls a decent amount, but... I mean, that, that might be worth checking out if you kind of want to go that route and do like a grenade build. Which is possible, because you can do any build. Error recovery gives you 33% chance to recover a special error after shooting it. Uh, when you have, like, if you have a crossbow or a bow, you always have attacks that you can do, but you can get these special arrows, so like fire arrows, water arrows, charm arrows, which turn the enemy to your side. So this gives you a chance to recover some of them after you, um, you know, take out the enemy and then loot them. Combat Kid, once per combat, if an enemy lands a fatal blow, Combat Kid will help you bounce back to life with 20% health. If you die in a resurrecting combat, Combat Kid will be available again. That's if you're just going in, just like doing a suicide run, suicide build, which is very possible. You can do that with, um, I like say there's a couple ways you can do that actually. But like, uh, let me see, where is it? There's one. And stable. Yeah, so unstable makes you explode in a bloody cloud when you die, dealing 50% of your vitality as physical damage in a three meter radius. So if you mix unstable with comeback kid, um, then you know, I'm sure that's how it works. I never tried it, but um, you can probably <laughs> do some pretty like crazy suicide builds. I don't know if that works because I don't I, I don't know if you die and then come back or if you just are prevented from dying and you just gain 20% health. But I think you die and then come back. But um, I have used this before, but I can't remember. It was a long time ago. But that with unstable, I'm sure I'm I'm assuming that could be a fun little like self-explosion build or something nice suicide build a character with demon has an extra 15 percent fire resistance but takes a 15 percent penalty for water resistance additionally the maximum fire resistance raised by 10. so that's pretty much the uh what was it the opposite of ice king that's like fire so that's cool elemental affinity lowers the action point cost of spells by one when standing in a surface of the same element 
that's really, really good. Um, if you are going like a certain, like a poison route or a fire route, and you just wanna, you can get this with demon and just stand in fire and then just like launch all these fire spells. Um, that would be pretty gnarly. I never tried that. I've used an elemental affinity, but I never tried to do like a demon elemental affinity build. This is the thing, I played like this game a lot. And I still barely scratch the surface. I mean, I, I don't know how many hours I've had having it. I think I have like 180. And that's just PC. It doesn't count my PlayStation plays. So I'm probably like well over 200 something hours. And um, I barely, like there's so much more that I haven't even tr like tried or touched. This is how good this game is. Escapist allows you to flee combat when enemies are right next to you. Pretty good. You know, I think that, um, I think that, uh, surpasses opportunity or opportunist five-star diner doubles the effects of food and potions um that could be good i mean i really would in my opinion probably not worth taking um th th there's just better options but you never know like potions if you want to do like a beefy buff build you can do that because like food and potion like food has each food has a uh, buff on it so it'll give you like generally a buff or a downside if it's poison or something like that but generally it'll give you like one to dexterity two to intelligence kind of thing so you could like use that as a buff build that would be cool glass cannon with glass cannon you start every combat round with maximum maximum ap but magic and physical armor do not protect you from statuses so not you can't use it with lone wolf um that can be potentially devastating because yeah you'll have max ap so you can do a lot of damage but at the same time like statuses or statuses are there's they're plenty in the game like that's when you get on fire or you become chilled or you become poisoned those that happens like every fight and if you don't have armor to defend against that you can go down real quick but you know just depends on your style because you can probably kill before you even get any statuses on you <laughs> it just depends um that's what that's for everybody knows what glass cannon is gorilla when sneaking gorilla increases attack damage by 40 percent also reduces cost of entering sneak mode by one ap again i never tried sneak build maybe i should do that because i just i'm you know it's probably really good but i just never really had an interest in it even when i played the scoundrel uh, build that i did like this rogue build i never used sneak i just run in guns blazing kind of thing Hothead, while you are at maximum vitality, Hothead grants you an extra 10% critical chance and 10% more accuracy. This is good if you have a lot of defensive like abilities like armor and um, magic armor, physical and magic armor, because uh, you could just be like critting like crazy. So this might, this would probably be really good for a ranger, like somebody that's a archer or crossbowman or something. Um, probably not a lone wolf because you're always going to be getting attacked because you're going to be the sole focus. But I can see in a party, this would be really good for a ranged class that just sits back and just attacks everybody. Leech heals you when standing in blood. This is okay. Um, quite frankly, I never really got too much of a benefit out of it. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of a, of a necromancer skill. Leech is good. Yeah, this is good. Because there's a lot of blood that ends up on the ground, especially if you're doing like a melee necromancer build. Um, like scoundrel slash necromancer, warfare slash necromancer, you'll be there'll be blood all over the place because you're all like whenever you hit somebody without any armor on, they're bleeding, or you can even uh, uh, hit them with abilities that make them bleed, or you can do rain like blood rain, which is a hydrosophus slash necromancer ability, I believe, and it makes the whole area get covered in blood, and then you can just run around and heal yourself. So, yeah, I take that back what I said before. This is a great skill to have especially if you're melee living armor adds 35 percent of all healing you receive by skills or consumables to your magic armor very good um especially if you're necromancer healing yourself or just a healer in general um you with necromancer and all damage you do heals you so you get i believe this does benefit off a of necromancer so whenever you attack somebody you're healing and you're getting 30 percent of that healing turned into magic armor so pretty like really good i generally get this a lot especially with my necromancer bulls. We already went over Lone Wolf. Uh, mnemonic, if I'm saying that right, gives you three extra points in your memory attribute. Important for casters. Um, 
it'll get to a point where you have like so many skills but you can't use them because you don't have enough memory slots so this is very useful morning person when resurrecting you resurrect, re you resurrect to full health that's only if you're planning on dying a lot it could be good with a suicide build opportunist gives you the ability to perform attacks of opportunity we went over that earlier where you, somebody walks next to you you can just smack them by default even though, even though it's not your turn Parry Master gives you 10% dodging while dual wielding. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty handy. With my dual wielder, I had my Axeman. I had um, like 60, I think I was like above 70% or something like that in dodging by the end of the game. And it was really nice because he was devastating against melee characters and ranged characters. But he, he would get destroyed by casters a lot. But um, I had three other of his teammates to back him up. So it was all good. Pet pal and I told you to talk to animals. I think with the gift bag, I don't need this because you get you get this by default, I believe. Savage Sortilage. Savage Sortilage gives you gives all magical skills a critical chance equal to your critical score. So you could do a critical caster build, which is something I would probably like to eventually try. I never did because um, usually like with wits, uh, the critical builds um, go more towards like scoundrel and ranger, you know, melee stuff. But this could be pretty devastating if you want to do a caster crit build. Slingshot adds an extra 5 meter range to your grenade throws. Good hand and handy for a grenade build. Stinch decreases everyone's attitude towards you by 25, but melee opponents find you less attractive in combat. So this would be good if you want to play like a caster or a healer. And, um, you know, that way melee characters will just ignore you most of the and then go for the tank or something like that but you won't be the one you want talking to merchants and stuff in town <laughs> torturer this is a good one with torturer certain statuses caused by you are no longer blocked by magic or physical armor and their duration is extended by one turn this is devastating burning poisoning bleeding necrofire acid suffocating entangled death wish and ruptured tendons are affected by this talent this is an exceptionally powerful um talent because it just ignores magic and physical armor and you generally are going to be doing these abilities or these statuses a lot burning poison bleeding necrofire or the environment will or your enemy will and remember if your enemy casts at something that causes stuff to go on fire they can get put on fire too so you know but um they won't that won't affect torture like it's just what uh, you cast on them will affect it but i'm just saying that this happens a lot so this is really good to have for pretty much almost any character um like yeah there's, there's really no downside to getting torture unstable makes you explode we already went over that walk it off reduces all status durations by one turn including positive statuses does not affect statuses with a duration of one turn so um if you don't do like buff yourself too much and everything then this is great because it'll prevent you from getting poisoned for more than one turn or bleeding for more than one turn <coughs> excuse me and but if you tend to buff yourself a lot oh, bump the mic there then this could be pretty bad because it even reduces your positive statuses and that's good because it it's a good balance because if it didn't have the including positive status aspect to it it would be probably be way too overpowered what a rush increases your recovery maximum action points by one when your health is below 50 percent so this is cool if you're doing like a low um like a necromancer death wish kind of build where you the more damage you, you do more damage with the less hp you have and then you get to the point where you you're there's ability where i forget what it's called but you can't go below one hp for like two or three turns or something like that and it's awesome because you can mix that with death wish and you can just wreck people and that's yeah it's, it's so much fun so tags here are just um you get your origin this these will you know barbarian gesture mystic noble outlaw scholar and soldier this is the um red princes so he can't you can't change him because he's a noble and a scholar he's a prince and it also shows like buffs right here you see um male you are male you are perceived as male by those that encounter you so you might have unique dialogues to some females uh, Red Prince has his own unique dialogues to a lot of stuff. Scholar will allow you to uh, read certain things that like most most people won't, and you're like perceived as more intelligent and things like that. 
uh, noble people will like you'll have like you know better speech you know more persuasion better speech and stuff so people will like kind of see you as higher regard to that in that and lizard i think um i think you just get like fire and poison resistance as lizards i, I believe but yeah these are um mostly just dialogue options that you'll have and the way people interact with you in the game the npcs and the way you know that um jester's <laughs> it's kind of funky but you know it, each one of these have a benefit it just depends on where you are and who you're talking to some of them won't be as ben beneficial in certain areas while others will so it just kind of depends on how you want to build your character and instruments this is just like i always go with the cello I like to channel. Yeah, hear that? That was kind of nice, too. I think I'll do the band series. I've never done that before. So, yeah, this is just uh, how it starts. As you can see, they did not mess around. The game is exceptionally complex and detailed, but not to the point where it will scare away new players and people that are new to RPGs. Well, it might be a little overwhelming for people that are new to RPGs, but for your just standard RPG player, this is a fantastic addition to like the RPG genre. And, you know, it's a few years old now, but it still holds up today. Graphics and everything. And I could honestly say it's probably one of the best RPGs ever made, in my opinion. Um, just given the sheer amount of customization you can do, the lore, the, the writing, the voice acting, like just everything about it is exceptionally well done. And maybe we'll find some things to nitpick about it as we go on, but I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So that's the introduction. I think I'll call it. Uh, quits here before we get started and we'll see who we want to go with in the next video and then get um, get the uh, the playthrough going I'm kind of leaning towards doing a custom character usually with Lone Wolf I like to do more custom characters um, with the like party ability I like to have like the regular characters they're they're a lot of fun, and their 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 choices are um, different, and, and their stories are a lot of each, you know, a lot of fun, and they're all different in their own way. But um, custom would probably be better for this round. That way, I can kind of avoid spoilers and stuff for some aspects of the main character storylines. If you know, if you guys uh, don't want to get spoiled there, maybe I'll do an undead elf because I can eat stuff, eat bodies. But we'll see. All right, for now, we'll put it into this video. It's getting kind of long, and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. So have a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, depending on where you are. This has been Jarek Defiler, and I'm playing some Divinity Original Sin 2. Breakdown. <laughs>